Hi and welcome back to the chicken enclosure. Today it's part six of our series on chicken keeping for beginners. Today we're going to talk about safety and security. So join me. Hi, my name's Fiona. We've covered a lot in this series. We've looked at space, we've looked at coops, we've looked at food types, we've looked at drinkers, we've looked at feeders. This time I'd like to cover safety and security. There are lots of threats to your chickens. There's foxes, there's rats, there's badgers, and even humans. There's various types of equipment that you could buy to keep them safe and today I'm going to talk you through all the hints and tricks to reduce the threat from those predators but also show you some of the equipment that we use to keep our chickens safe. So let's get started. If you ask most people what the biggest threat in terms of predators to their chickens are, they'll probably say foxes. For us, we haven't had that experience. We've never lost chickens to foxes, badgers, crows, rats, all of the normal predators out there. We have, however, had chickens stolen. We've decided to go for quite a high-end solution to the problem, and we've installed these wireless security cameras around the property. This one's made by Ring, and it's actually pointing at our field gate. We also have them on our driveway and at various points around the property, so if anyone does come on our land, we will see them and we will have footage. If going for security cameras is too high end, what you can do is go for a cheap solution with this, a simple deterrent sign that goes up on the gate or in any entrance to your property. It's possible to buy dummy CCTV cameras too, which you can put up to actually back up the sign. So that's a very cheap solution. Let's have a look at foxes as a predator. Although we've never lost a chicken to a fox, we have had them on the property. This footage shows a fox on our driveway taken by our ring cameras. And here he is, bold as brass, walking across the drive down towards the chicken enclosure. And here he is again, walking around the fencing which goes around the chicken enclosure area. This is our main deterrent to those foxes that try and come onto the property. We've also got film of badgers and we'll show you that in a little while. But an electric fence really makes your chickens a harder target. And I have to say that nothing is 100% and it's only a deterrent. But I have to say in all the years we've kept chickens, it's worked and the foxes and the badgers in the area have gone elsewhere and got other people's chickens, but not ours. We've got our electric fence from a company called Hotline and they have this wonderful series of what they call hot gates. So you can unhook them, but the gate is still live. There's no chance of you electrocuting yourself. You don't have to mess about with turning the fence off and it's absolutely fantastic. We started to publish a series of videos on installing an electric fence and everything you need to know to go about that. So if it is something you're interested in, please look at the link above and uh, good luck. In our video on chicken coops, I showed you this piece of equipment. This is our second line of defense to any mammals getting into the chicken enclosure. And it's an auto opener and closer for the chicken coops. Chickens are fantastic. When it gets to dusk, they will naturally go in and roost within the coop. This box will sense the light levels and I can do this manually. Press the button and it lowers the door. When it gets to dawn and the light levels rise and the chickens are awake, it will raise the door again. Now this unit is made by an organization called Chicken Guard and it comes with light sensors, a timer, and it also, as you see, will allow you to manually open and close the door as well. Once the chickens are safely inside, it's far less likely that a predatory mammal is going to come in and get at the chickens. Again, it's not 100% certain, but it's less likely. These are the badgers that come through our garden. 
People do lose chickens to badgers, but again, we haven't had this problem because of the combination of electric fencing and the chicken guard auto openers and closers. We've dealt with the big predators now. So now I want to deal with one of the biggest issues for chicken keepers, and that's rodents. Now, at some point, if you keep chickens, it's highly likely that you're going to see rodents around your chicken enclosure. They're attracted by food, by water and by shelter. In our episode on feeders, we showed you some open feeders. Now, if you have those, they are a very cheap option, but please, please remove those at night so any rats or rodents aren't attracted to them. We have these higher end solutions and this is a treadle feeder from Grandpa's Feeders. It needs an adult chicken to stand on the treadle to open the lid for them to access the food. A rat isn't heavy enough to stand on this so they can't get at it so food is not one of the main attractants for a rodent into our chicken area. So that's our treadle feeders, the day-to-day -day feeding. For our long-term food storage, we keep our long-term food in these plastic household bins. Now we just have these going spare. If we'd been buying from you, we probably would have bought the galvanised metal, which was recommended by Exmoor Trapper. But we had these lying around and had no other use. As yet, we've not had the rats being able to access the food inside. They haven't tried to chew in, but we do know people that that's happened to. So if you are buying for the first time, I highly recommend getting the galvanised metal dustbins. This is one of our chicken drinkers. A contact of ours, Exmoor Trapper, filmed a fantastic video on rats and poultry. And one of the main points that he made was that rats need to access a huge amount of water on a daily basis. The best way to stop them accessing your chicken area is to withdraw water access. So in the evening, just empty out your drinkers so there's nothing that they can access and then in the morning give your chickens wonderful cool fresh water we've talked about food and water that could attract rats into your chicken enclosure the third aspect that could attract rodents is shelter we do have trees in our chicken enclosure but we don't have any thick brush and we don't have any hedging within the enclosure which means that they don't have anywhere to hide. One of the things we did have to consider though is we have some of these very low slung coops. Since then we've built coops which are high off the ground and the reason we've done that is when we got these low coops the very first winter we found that a family of rats had actually burrowed into the soil underneath and had created a nest underground using the, the heat from the chicken coop to keep them warm. So our simple solution to that is we didn't get rid of these coops, we've set them on paving slabs. That means that the rats don't have the benefit of that warmth, there's not enough room for them to get underneath, and we haven't had them inside the enclosure since. If you're unlucky enough to have rodents on your property and have evidence of rodents on your property, you have two main ways of actually eradicating them. You can either poison them or you can use a kill trap. As you can see, for both of these, we have them inside tunnels, so we're less likely to actually catch a non-targeted species, which could be small birds, might be small he hedgehogs, and nobody wants that to happen. It's one of the main reasons why in the UK you can't put these things out prophylactically. You have to put these out if you have evidence, so you've got to be able to see a rat first, or see droppings from a rat, or have evidence that they've gnawed at your food containers, for example. The wonderful thing about rats is they are creatures of habit and they like to have security as they run. So they will generally have a wall on one side of them and they'll run around the outside of buildings. This means that you can put tunnels with either poison inside that tunnel or kill trap inside that tunnel for the rats to run along the outside of the wall, inside the entrance to the tunnel, and either hit the trap or hit the poison bait. If you live in a different country to the UK, please do take, check out your local legislation. And if you're watching this video after autumn 2019 when this is filmed and you live in the 
UK, just double check the current legislation just to make sure that you're still within the law before you put these out. Let me introduce you to Gannett. You may have seen Gannett in some of the previous videos. She's the star of many of these. She is my oldest chicken, so she's a fantastic model. And she is in full molt, so if there's feathers flying around, you um, will just have to excuse her because it's that time of year. The last thing I want to talk to you about in these videos is wing clipping. Now it's possible your chickens may see that the grass is greener on the other side of your fence and they'll want to fly out and have a look. Wing clipping makes them really think about can they fly, can they stay balanced. And while it's called wing clipping, you're only clipping the feathers from one wing. Now, Clipping feathers is just like cutting hair. It doesn't hurt and providing you're a long way from where the feathers reach the skin, it's not going to hurt them at all. So let's take a closer look at Gannett's wing. Now we don't wing clip our chickens because they don't try and escape. It's not a problem that we've got. So we've left them natural. And she has, as you can see, multiple feathers layered over and then these wonderful long flight feathers. The idea of wing clipping is you'll cut in a straight line halfway along these flight feathers just so she really has to think about can I stay upright, can I stay solid if I fly out. Now hopefully that's everything you need to know about safety, predators and security for your chickens. If you've liked this content, do take a moment to give me a thumbs up below. If you've got any questions, just leave me a comment and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Or if there's anything else you'd like to see that I haven't covered in this series on beginner's chicken keeping, again, leave me a comment and I'll do my best to make that happen. If you would subscribe to the channel and click the notifications icon, you'll get to know of any new content as soon as it's posted. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.